Greetings, friends and fellow cigar box guitar enthusiasts. Del Puckett here with a different style of YouTube video. First off, welcome to 2023. Woohoo! You guys remember that shirt that said six strings or three strings too many? Yeah, I wore that sucker out. All you got is the R and a little bit of the two. Everything else is vanished. So this is what I mean by a different kind of video. I'm going to divide it up into two parts, the A roll and the B roll. And those subdivisions will be on the bar, the, um, what do you call that bar that goes across? You know, you can just uh, click on it and you'll see there's like A roll and B roll. If you want to get the whole video, you got to watch, of course, the A roll and the B roll. If you want to just uh, watch the important stuff, you can watch the A roll. If you want to watch just the goofy stuff, then you can watch the B roll. So um, just to give you an example, some of the B roll, this here is an arm wah that my wife picked up at a state sale. Uh, it was uh, gross. Oh my gosh. Um, we sanded it down, and I'm going to just put the doors on it and like that. And so, so I'm using some of my cigar box guitar skills for non-cigar box guitar things. And as the video progresses, you'll see exactly what I'm saying. So, so stay tuned. Okay, the A roll of this video will be building a guitar out of pallet. So yes, yeah, so I looked at those pallets. They're both got some straight boards on them. This cross member and this guy here, it's oak. So I think I'll use that for the neck. And, uh, well, well, let's see what happens. Actually, to be honest with you, I have no idea what the heck I'm getting myself into. And the cat's, the cat's gonna help me out. I told you that cat's gonna help me. She's inspecting my lumber, making sure there's no mice. So my wife picked up this armoire at an estate sale for $50 and it had the worst paint job. So I've been sanding and sand. In fact, I've been two days of just solid sanding. And I want to show you a little bit of the, I'm almost done, but I just wanted to show you a little bit of the pre. Look at that. That's the pre. I mean, this thing was like camoed, but with like fluorescent uh, rainbow uh, and you can see uh, the before and after. And I'm telling you, it's really hard to get in the cracks of the little crown molding and stuff. Plus the raised panels of these doors there. I took the doors off there. You can see the hinges, where the hinges were and sanded it off. But, um, and I'm doing it all by hand. Uh, the reason being is because it's in the house. It's too, too heavy to carry outside. I mean, I could carry it outside, but you get to be my age, you think of alternatives to carrying heavy things. So I'm just sanding it, just taking my time. And, but I'm almost done. I did, I did want to show you that prior to me finishing here. You can see the, the sides there, same thing. I mean, the sides were all the same color. And I got the top edge started, started taking that off. I, I wanted to show you how horrible it was pre and post. All right, time to get back to work. First things first, we're gonna safely tear these pallets apart. All right, well, that took a little longer than expected, mainly because that wood is so hard. I opted for the Sawzall rather than just pry it, pry it apart. Yeah, those nails are in there tight, tight, tight. So, uh, plus a lot of the wood was damaged, so I didn't feel the need necessarily to take so much care to preserve it. I will save some of the select sides for like the, the sides of the cigar box guitar, but mainly I was after that piece right there. So now I'm going to attempt to carve a neck we use a table saw and cut all the bad pieces off, all the splintered and all the nails, and we got a plethora of nice, it's actually a little thick, you know, but uh, 
we'll have to make electric guitars out of it, but it's oak. And then I managed, we managed, <coughs> me and my brother, we managed to get all the nails out of these guys. These nails, these little twisty nails, see how they got the little twist, twist thread on them? Dude, they are so hard to get out. And if you break the head off, God help you. And he is a massive crowbar. So anyhow, we successfully got all of the nails out, all except for one. There's one nail that is in, and here it is right here. I use the Sawzall, unfortunately, dang it. So every, everywhere else, so you're gonna have to watch out for that guy. So, but what I was gonna do is I was gonna cut this off anyway, so hopefully that nail doesn't go down too deep there. I might actually accidentally hit it. The piece that I wanna salvage is all along here because it's too thin for a neck in this axis here. So I'm gonna have to use this axis, which I think is gonna be wide enough. I did measure it and it's gonna be just perfect. So what I need to do is I need to get this straight, this edge perfectly straight. And <clears throat> what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna screw this piece of wood to a piece of wood that has like a really straight edge and then use my rail on my table saw to get a nice straight edge in right here. Well, if you're going to be a serious cigar box guitar player, then you need to really take care of your fingers. <clears throat> so anytime you're going to be doing anything dangerous or destructive, always be sure to wear gloves because you can control a lot of accidents. However, every once in a while, something comes along that's not an accident and it's just like a case of poor luck or bad luck. Gloom, despair, and agony on me because... Oh my gosh, dude, I got it. I got the worst hangnail or ingrown, I'm sorry, ingrown fingernail ever. That's on my social finger there. Uh, but man, I tell you what, you can see it's all red and um, gosh, it's, it's sore. It's definitely infected. So I got some of that Neo Spine, whatever, I don't know what it is. Put that on there. It's an antibacterial, um, takes the sting away. It's sore. So gosh, and any, any little bump, oh, it's so sensitive. So. It, this is what I'm going to do. I got to go do some work out in the yard. I got to go, got to do manly duties like chop wood. And so what am I going to do? It's like, oh my gosh, I got a guitar slide. So with this guitar slide, I'm going to tape it to this finger like this so that that finger is protected. And I'll just tape it right there so I can still use my hand. Guys, because I still need to use my hand. If I tape it to this guy on this side here, It'll be the best because the alley's on this side. That makes sense? So you gotta improvise every once in a while, guys. So obviously I'm not gonna bang it around, but uh, it's pretty, pretty secure. So I'm gonna get that load of wood into that trailer. On your marks, get set, go! So have you ever seen these, these log splitters? This is a champion 34 ton. Dude, it actually works really good. I'm gonna split this, this log, check this out. Quarter, quarter chunks. I guess that's what you call them, right? And 
right, that's enough. Should be plenty. So as you can see, the plan worked pretty good. I got this piece of molding that has the perfectly straight edge here. And I screwed my oak piece onto it and then ran it through the sled on the table saw so that this size here and it, what it yielded was a nice perfectly straight edge on this side so this will be my neck link And I made sure to measure that it was going to be the exact right thickness for some fretboard material. So this thickness here is going to be, oh yeah, dude, beautimous, beauty. The only bugaboo, if you want to call it a bugaboo, is these nails here are going to be on the side. Maybe I can strategically get those to be the, um, the position markers, wouldn't that be just nice? As far as the position markers go, gosh, I was thinking maybe use some of these nail heads. Now, these nails here came out of the pallet. Or use some of these antique rusted screws that came out of the armoire. These are in the hinge. And these are totally corroded. I mean, I had a hard time getting some of them out there. Just the tops of here are just rusted but they would be perfect for position markers inside of a, a pallet cigar box guitar. I think I'm gonna go with the nails because the nails were originally with the pallet. And like I said, maybe I can get them to line up in these holes. So now that I have this side perfectly straight edge, this here, then I just run this side to get up against the rail and I can get this little contour. There's a little bit of a, of a little bit of a, about the thickness of a, of a blade right here. So. If I line up on this side on the rail, then this side here should also be straight and I'll have a nice parallel block to begin with. After five passes of this thing through the table saw with the fence, I finally got all the edges to be smooth and usable. So now I just gotta pick which side I want to be the top. I think I'm gonna do this side to be the top for the uh, no, this side right here. This side will be the top. Um, one thing I also wanted to <laughs> point out, kind of funny, is this piece here that we cut off, right? When we cut it off on the table saw the, the first time. Dude, look at that. You can make, you can make a couple of huge saddles out of this thing. Put a big old fret wire on that, make this be the saddle. And then, oh yeah, the hinge. <laughs> look at that hinge, dude. That's like massive. Massive hinge, massive cell. All right, here's some more B-roll. So what I did in the last hour or so, oops, is I installed this, this um, power strip along this window. So I'm trying to create another workspace in this corner here, and you can see somebody's actually working really hard. Really hard. So I clear, cleared out the um, all the junk that was in this corner. I was debating whether or not to put more of this, um, what do you call it? Um, oh, what do you call that board? Pegboard. I was gonna put that on this wall, but then um, thought twice, and I thought, man, it maybe just needs a shelf. Can you hear? Can you hear purring? With So we saved some of these pallet nails. I actually sharpened the tip on the grinder. And then this power supply strip right here. It's got the cord that goes through the table there down to the underside of the table. Right there. And I use these nails just to hold the cord up and plugged it in. And those oak pieces, <laughs> man, I tell you what, man, oak burns nice and hot. Seriously, a lot hotter than pine, that's for sure.
So I've lost track of how many days that I've spent working on this palette guitar. And the reason being is because there's been a lot of interruptions. I've been busy doing other things. And of course there was Valentine's Day and stuff. Um, that being said, I did wake up this morning to a surprise. It's like, oh my gosh, um, it snowed last night. I'll look, let you peek out the window. Let's see if it'll uh, switch here so you can see it. Yeah, there you go. So we got snow everywhere. So what I was thinking about doing before I get started today is I'm going to go fill up my coffee kettle full of snow. And I'm going to make some snow coffee. You guys remember that song from like the 70s or the 80s? Watch out where the huskies go. Don't you eat that yellow snow. Yeah, we're not going to eat any yellow snow. Um, here's a nice little spot here where it's undefiled. Now, if I can just do it without the dogs interrupting me, I'll be okay. The dog wants to help. Don't you? Yep, you want to help. All right. Well, I don't need your help, dog, so. Um, it's cold. Mmm, yummy. Look at him. He so wants to help. You want to help me, huh? Sorry, dog. You don't like coffee. It's actually starting to snow again. I got this thing packed. I guarantee when it melts, so it's gonna like, the level's gonna go down, but hey, it's snowing again, yay. All right, we got the fire raging and the snow ready to melt. All right, so let's get to building. So we're gonna pick up where we left off. I glued this piece together. Of course, I'll cut it down to size and then sand it. And make it smooth and then I'm going to miter these edges and then make a box like a frame box so that's where we're at now all right so we mitered up the corners and then glued them and clamped them of course I did cut this down to size now so now it's just a matter of waiting for the glue to dry and those, these the oak, the oak pieces that we're cutting off, we're throwing into the fire and we're cooking up that coffee. And then using this little jig for the uh, table saw, I clamped my fretboard or my uh, neck to this thing and then gave it a good scarf joint on the table saw here. So now we're letting the glue dry. And um, so this is actually about over an inch thick. So I'll have to probably cut this top off here and then carve it down to the thickness for the tuners. So it shouldn't be a problem. Just make, I'm making sure that's nice and aligned there so I don't have any extra filing or sanding to do. So that feels pretty smooth there. Same thing on this side. Again, so now we just Hurry up and wait. All right, we are nice ah, and hot. You can see the steam coming out the top maybe. Maybe not. So I have the last bit of my son's stamina coffee. I'll put the link in the video description. So yeah, I don't know if you can see the, see the water level, but it's about, ah, it's about a third of the way up maybe. So. Here goes nothing. Yep, birds, look at that. So while waiting for the glue to dry, I went ahead and cut this guy in half and then traced out the other side on the here, traced it out, right, so that I can cut, cut this part out here and I'll have two huge saddles. So using the jigsaw, cut this sucker out. So now I have a huge, 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 huge saddle. Now, this saddle is not for this pallet guitar because obviously it's too big. This one's gonna be for a King Kong guitar I'm gonna make in the future. Um, but to be honest with you, I'm, I'll, I'll probably recut this part here 
like about right here, just so that the saddle's really only about maybe four inches, which is still ginormous. So now that the glue is dried, I got to thinking, this neck is so thick, I can just put the frets directly into the top here. Of course, I'll have to sand it and get rid of, make it nice and smooth. But so that what that now what that means is now I'm gonna have to cut this off here, and then I'll probably take up about a thickness off the top just so I can get a little bit of a of a gap right here before it jumps onto the jumbo fret. Does that make sense? Kind of like if there was a fretboard there, I'm just gonna cut it down about the thickness of, of an actual fretboard. So using this file here, which is one of the oldest files I have in my tool collection. And it's still as sharp as get out. I filed it down here, down, down to the level that I needed. And then I cut off the back side here with the table saw. Now this piece here, I am gonna keep because I'm gonna cut this piece in half longwise and then glue them to the sides here just to make this, this part a little bit wider here. So I'm gonna glue some wings on here. And then of course I'm gonna cut, probably cut the top off just to make it you know balanced to the right, to the right size. I don't want this thing to be all ginormous over here. I want this to be in in proportion to the instrument. The glue is also dried on this bad boy. Come on. Kind of a drag when the glue sticks to the clamp. All right, so now, now I just need to de determine I still haven't made the top yet. This this will be the back. I haven't made the top yet. But I just need to determine now where the how long of an instrument it needs to be and then how many frets. So, so I'll probably let the, the so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go with a um, let's go with a 24 inch scale and then we'll put all the frets on here and we'll see how far how far this is. Anyhow, so that's going to be like the proportion, the general proportion right there, which is a pretty significant size of guitar. So I ran into a little bit of a dilemma. I started selecting the boards for the top so before I glued them together, right? I cut them all up. And I was just about ready to glue them together, and I was like, wait a minute. They're not all the same thickness. You can see here, this one over here is like thicker. These guys here in the middle, the one in the middle is thinner. And I was like, oh, that ain't going to work. Because when you get them side by side, right, you're going to have a gap, right? And I don't have a planer, unfortunately. So what I did is I went back to my stack of pallet boards. And as you can see, I still have a whole, I got a whole bunch of them left still. And what I did is I selected the ones that had the exact same thickness, thicknesses. So all of these guys have the exact same thickness. So I went ahead and ran them through the table saw on either side so I get nice clean joints. So now we're just going to glue these bad boys up. Whew, that was a near miss. So I've been working all day and I forgot about my coffee. So looks good. Looks nice and black. Snow coffee. Hmm. Take a sniff. Can you see the steam coming off? Hmm. Definitely worth the wait. My gosh. Oh, that is so good. Hmm. Yum, yum, yum. So I have the top glued up now. So now it's just a matter of waiting for the boards to dry. So I think I'll let these dry overnight. I'll come back tomorrow. So the next little video clip that you see will be tomorrow. So like I said, it is the next day. <coughs> And it snowed again last night, my gosh. Look at that. Top of the greenhouse covered with snow. Um, 
snow blindness is a thing. My gosh, it's bright out here. And here's a little kitty cat. Meow. All right, so let's pick up where we left off on the pallet caster. So here's the game plan for today. First off, we are going to trace uh, the size of the box. Actually, I'll, I'll, I'm not going to use this. I'm going to use the real box. I'll trace this on that and then cut it out the top for, the, for this box here. So that'll be first. Then once I cut it out, then we'll do the sound holes and then I'll start chiseling out where I'm going to put the controls for the electronics. So that'll be this guy. Ooh. Good thing I didn't drop that on my foot. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna be nice. That's gonna be nice. So that'll be the top. As far as the neck goes, uh, last night before I went to bed, I did put a heel on and then glued it up so that it would stay drying overnight. So this is the game plan for the neck. I'm going to taper from here to here. I want to take off about maybe, uh, I don't want to say a half an inch, a little bit less than half an inch up here, just so that neck is nice and thin right here. And then I want it to taper thicker, thicker, thicker as it goes to the heel. So I'm going to do kind of a diagonal cut here. Then once I do, then I'm going to route it on the routing table and route off these end corners. And after that, that's when you glue your little wings on here on the scarf. So that's a bunch of different steps for this guy. Oh yeah, and then I'll probably cut down here and then prepare for the back angle here. Again, this is gonna have to be a super deep cut because there is no fretboard on here. So I'm gonna have to keep that into consideration. <laughs> Don't those nail holes just look like position markers? They sure do. Here's a real quick tip. Have you ever wondered where on earth to cut your, your notch, your back thing here for your, the top of your guitar? Sometimes I, I have to like rethink it, overthink it. But here's an easy trick. What I do is I turn the neck over upside down and I get the box and I hit the heel of the box on the inside. And then I just lay this sucker down right here because that's going to be kind of on the same plane where the, the top of the box is. And then I just strike a line, right? You just strike a line right where that, and that tells me where I need to begin cutting for my back angle. So I'm gonna cut down here, straight down, because that's gonna be the edge of the box. Now, keep in mind that this here is gonna determine how high your fretboard sits above the box. So that's something to keep in mind when you cut that. So real quick, this is what I did. I measured the thickness of the top, and that would be right here. And then I added the amount that I want the fretboard to stick up over the plane of the cigar or the, the pallet box. And then of course I incorporated a slight, ever so slight back angle. You probably can't tell here, but this is thinner right here than it is here, thicker. Thicker here than it goes like tapers down to thinner. Again, it's very subtle. It's gonna have a subtle back angle. So that's how you do that, if that's how you wanna do that. Okay, real quick, I've come to the conclusion and I'm okay with the fact that this is probably going to be an electric guitar because there's just no way to really probably vibrate this thick of a top. So yeah, so we're, we're committed to make this electric guitar. That's gonna be the height of the fretboard, if you wanna call it a fretboard, above the plane of the box. And I went ahead and did the notch here. The piezo is gonna go right here. Cats are partying in the back room. Um, so yeah, so even though this is not gonna be an acoustic guitar, I went ahead and did this notch anyway, figuring it can't hurt. Um, and so now we'll do the sound holes. And like I said, I'm gonna carve away a little bit here so I can get the electronic knobs to punch through this thick, thick wall here. I don't know if you can see all those cuts on the top here. This is what's gonna be the fretboard. 
So I wanted to kind of smooth that or sand it flat because I'm going to put frets in here. So I figured what better tool than this flat sanding stick. So I'm just taking it, take it, taking it easy, taking my time, just making sure not to over press down or nothing. It's got, it's got a coarse side and a fine side. So I'm using the coarse side just to get this thing super, super, super straight and then smooth. We gave it a pass through the half round bit on the router. So it's starting to take shape and I also glued those wings onto the scarf. So now it's just a matter of hurry up and wait. All right, we use the Fibonacci calipers to determine where the sound hole is gonna go. Mayday, mayday. So have you ever had a hard time getting that little, that little round part out of the inside of these things? It's like, yeah, that's what happened here. So I got this thing stuck in there. So I was like, I couldn't wait, waste all this time trying to get it out. So I just drilled a whole bunch of little holes. And then I got some screws, stuffed them in the holes. And then just... Ay -ay -ay. So there's got to be a better way to do that than get stuck every time. Ugh. What a hassle. But yeah, so just. Maybe I need to go from the other side. At you! So this gets in your eyes even if you wear goggles. Yep, go halfway on this side, then halfway on this side, and then plink, it pops right out. Nice and neat, dude. Look at that. Nice little slug. All right, you call it in the head. You call it in the air. Heads I win, tails you lose. Ah! Yep, go halfway on this side, then halfway on this side, and then this thing just pops out. Boring! Awesome. Nice little slug there. Little wooden nickel. All right, you call it in the air. Heads I win, tails you lose. Ready? All right, so for some more B-roll, so I've been in the zone, carving and sanding and just making a mess. So now I'm gonna take some time and just clean up. So I got the four screws in each corner and we spent some time just sanding, filing all the edges and then sanding them smooth so that it's just smooth all the way around. Now, I didn't get all of the cuts out here so you can see actually some of the cuts that are still in here, some of the double. So I wanted to leave some of that in there because I thought it adds character. I kind of like the symmetry here these two and so what this is is just a, it's a it's the uh, saw blade that when it was cutting it vertically it actually just left a line there but look how it lines up perfectly with those sound holes so i was like ah, i think i'm just gonna leave it same thing on the side we got this, the cut marks so those cut marks are actually going to tie in with a little bit of the cut marks in the fretboard I started sanding this and I started getting down to the end and I thought, you know what, I'm going to leave a few, just a little tiny hint of those cut marks in there. And this guy here, that little line, that was a, a nail hole that I had actually cut through the nail hole. And so, um, yeah, so just some interesting character. I'm still going to file that down, sand it. But man, it's really turning out really awesome here. I'm thinking that it's going to be just great. Just great. So I realize that not everybody has a little Harbor Freight fret slotting jig and the, the right blade. There's other ways to cut your fret slots. One of them is to just get your template and then just with a, a sharp pencil, just mark out where the 
frets go, you want to be as precise as possible. So you just mark those out all up and down. And then you get yourself one of these cute little squares. There's probably cuter ones than this one here. This one's not really that cute. It's kind of old and rusty, but it's square. And then you just line up the square with your position markers. Then you get one of these old fashioned fretting saws. And I got this at the CB Giddy. I'll put a link in the video description below. Um, these here have a kerf called 0 0.023, 0 0.023 kerf. And then you just line up, make sure it's square. Obviously, you, wanna, you don't want any theta or any rotation. And you just line it up on your mark. On your marks, get set, go. And then just start off small or short or uh, what do you call it, calm? Calm, cool, and collected. And at first you just want to make a mark. You don't want to start cutting deep. You just want to kind of make a mark. And uh, you'll go back later and you'll get it to the right depth. But just from one to the next to the next, all we're doing is just, we're just making, we're just setting a groove here. I use these guys for everything, these saws. And as long as it's square, then that means that this, your fret's gonna be square. So it's a little bit painstaking, but no pain, no gain, right? I was gonna go with a weathered oak but I think it's already weathered oak. So I think I'm gonna go with something darker, maybe uh, like a walnut or something. I was gonna spray this headstock portion here, just the front, with this black enamel, and then stain the rest of it, and then distress it, and then sand it smooth, and then lacquer it with the nitrocellulose. So that was easy. I just put a piece of tape over the section that I did not want to get painted. And then just <clears throat> So now, stain. There's something just so transformative about stain. It's like, it's like one of the favorite parts of the process. But notice how these cuts really pop out whenever you stain it. It's like, wow. Just makes it look so authentic, even in the fretboard. I'm glad I left those in there. Look at that. Yeah. And then the headstock just being super dark. It's going to just add to the the overall vibe of this thing. All right, so today is the next day. And I'm gonna to try to get a lot accomplished tonight. So if you stain after you do your fret slots, make sure you go back and remove the stain out of the fret slots just by running your saw, saw blade through it one more time just to make sure that there's no Leftover, yeah, I can see, you can see there's some gum still come, coming out. So, 
Yeah, just make sure you get all the, all the stuff, all the debris from those fret slots because if you, you don't want anything in there while you put the fret in there, obviously then you'll have a high fret. One of the things I like to do is have a straight string pull. In other words, the string comes up over the zero fret or the nut, whatever you got here, and then goes straight to the tuner. So what I do is first off, you have to know the thickness of your shaft. Typically these are a quarter inch thick diameter, whatever. And so you got to keep in mind the cent oops, the center of that thing. And then you get a straight edge ruler and you let the edge of the ruler here be like the, the string, right? So a string is going to come up and you want it to go straight. So all I do is I put a little dot on where like the center of that diameter of that tuner peg is. So that this that way the string comes up and then just wraps right around. You know, if this was if that was off, if this dot was in or out, then then this wouldn't go straight. So in order in order to keep it straight right here, it's got to come up right in the center of that quarter inch diameter tuner head. Hopefully that makes sense. Let's try it out. Just like that. Moving right along, we got the string pull worked out there. Tuners. Next we'll do the position markers. I think I'm gonna use some of these nails and the heads of the nails. We sanded the box. Screwed it into the blocks in the back. Routed out for the piezo. Of course, the frets have been installed and polished. And uh, even got the top sanded as well. So this is starting to look like starting to look like a work of art. Greetings, friends and fellow cigar boss guitar enthusiasts. You boys have heard of cbgiddy.com, right? Yeah, check this out. All right, these are the basics if you want to build a cigar box guitar. You don't have to get all this stuff, but you can get these switches. 
Les Paul style of switches. This is going to go in between pickups. Potentiometers. Those are like for your volume controls. These, they got these rod piezos. Get volume knobs. These kind of piezos. Real quick here, the jack. Jack. The fret wire. Um, tuners. Okay, yeah, everybody needs tuners. Strings. A fret saw. This fret saw comes in so handy. I use it for so many things. Oh my gosh. Alrighty then. A couple of days have passed since, since I've had a chance to work on this pallet guitar. So I do have a couple hours today, so I'm hoping to get a lot accomplished. So right off the bat, I will be doing some electronics on the inside. And then I was thinking of maybe, I was thinking about maybe hitting this thing with some tongue oil to uh, kind of darken up the spots that I sand it off. And then of course, the hinge and the saddle and the strings and the whatnot. Position markers, oh yeah, nails for the position markers. So I got my work cut out for me today and hopefully I will get a lot accomplished. So I counted, I'm gonna need nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You got nine nails. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut these guys down to be about maybe three eighths of an inch. And then I will file them sharp. Then drill the holes in here, put some glue in the holes, and then pound these guys in accordingly. I found my bowl cutters <coughs> that I inherited from my father-in-law. And these things here are brutal, dude. Oh my gosh, dude. You do not want to get any member of your body in these little grips because if you do, trust me, you might not might not end well. Now we have nine sharp little tiny little nails. So you want to get the right size drill bit that matches the thickness of the nail. And then what I do is I only go as deep as I need to so that the tip of the nail is into the flesh of the wood so again the tip of the nail here is probably about less than an eighth of an inch so i drill it down so that that eighth of an inch is going to go into the wood and then what i like to do is just countersink the top of it just a little bit so i so i get the now i get a drill that's the size of the head of the nail and i go reverse reverse backwards and then i just push down as hard as i can and the reason why I go backwards is because I don't want it to drill. I just barely want it to like make an indentation as deep as the head of the nail is. And then I make up a concoction of glue and then get a little Q-tip and I force it in the hole as best I can. And then kind of wipe off the excess. Then I get the nail, push it in as far as I can. And then I get the hammer and I make sure it's on a good solid surface. And just pound it, wipe off the excess glue. And I hit it with a little piece of rusty sandpaper just to kind of give it a little patina and man I'm telling you what I'm telling you what I think it looks awesome and you know me I always like the solder burns for the top side position markers so what I do is I get a door nail stuff it into the soldering iron crank this sucker up to 11 and then give it some burn Just like that. 
Ain't you pretty? And here's what it looks like in the light. Because this top is so thick, there's no way that this potentiometer is gonna pop through and me be able to get the threads on there. So what I did is got one of these, a couple of them actually, and bored out some section there so that so I can get to the threads on the top side there. So you know what my problem is? You're like, yes. <laughs> you got many problems. <sighs> a few of them are, is I get so into the zone building these things that I forget to eat. I forget to pee. I forget to go to sleep at night. I forget to drink water. <coughs> so, reminder folks, drink lots of water, stay fluid, stay hydrated. good for your brain here's a little FYI see that sunshine there behind me well these videos are brought to you courtesy of mr. sunshine so I have a little charger here that uh, solar charger that I used to charge up the uh, the old iPhone here and that's what I'm using so thank God for the Sun huh I'm gonna let you in on a little, little secret uh, it's not really a secret, it's, but it is a tip. Two tips, two tricks when dealing with these kinds of builds. So what I like to do is tape a little flappy flappy directly centered on my neck that goes all the way through so that when I put the top on, I don't have to guess where that neck is underneath the top. Another thing is that you notice on the corners here I have these screw holes. Well, in order to ensure that the top is properly lined, especially when doing things like doing pickup cuts and whatnot, I just get a toothpick and jam it in the hole on all four corners. And this gives me confidence that my top is lined up to the bottom. And the reason why I was doing that is because you can see these little pencil marks here that I've got for the screw holes for the hinge. Well, I wanted to make sure that they were in a direct alignment with the piece of wood. And I, didn't, I wanted to remove all guesswork. Sometimes I'll put marks over here, but I figured the flap would work this time here. Um, yeah, I just want to make sure not to impale yourself because that would hurt. And just like that, it's nighttime. So if you notice here, I put some, some glorious wings on here, strategically right underneath the pickup, because I ain't got nothing to mount that pickup into. I picked a really nice pickup. This is one of them. One of them Seymour Duncan pickups. I'm gonna, leave, I'm gonna leave the cover off, but it comes with a cover. Um, so here's the deal. Um, there's no screw holes in this thing. None at all. So what I did is I started drilling it and I thought, ah, that drilling's not going to work. So I just put a little notch. I'm just putting a little notch, just like this guy here. And you can hear Mojo over there chewing his bone. So I'm putting a little notch in there and then the screw is going to go through the notch and just kind of squeeze it. I'm going to do one on either side. And this is how we do this is how we do the notch. All right guys, plug your ears cuz it's going to be loud.
Those are your safety glasses. All right, so now we got a notch there. So I have a notch here and a notch there. Nacho! So now I'm gonna center it up in here and then just give it the old squeeze play with those screws. Now I might put some hot glue underneath there just to kind of keep it from doing the teeter-totter. And um, I think it's gonna work. Can you remember that game where you pick a card? Pick a card, any card, any card. Bam! We're going to pick the King of Spades. He's got a nice little beard, nice little goatee. So we'll cut it, cut him up, and use him for the piezo. These are football cards. Let's see if I can kick me a field goal. Wow! Now that we gave it the snippy, 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 looks like a normal card. Did you know you can find these piezos? and smoke detectors so yeah go next time you're out and about and you run into a uh one of them old smoke detectors just crack that so sucker open dude and you'll see one of these things here so i do the ground to the outside and the red to the inside it's very important if you get this backwards dude it's going to sound like crap i remember one time building a guitar and dude i could not figure out for the life of me why the heck it sounded so bad and then when i reverse engineered it i saw that the ground was on the inside and then the inside was actually on the ground as far as the way it was sw swapped yeah definitely don't want to swap that now that that piezo is embedded in hot glue underneath this king card now what i do is i get my little saw and put a little notch right where that screw for the hinge goes in and so the ground wire will go into that little hole and that screw will also screw into that little hole, thus ground the whole system. So with a screw in the hole on this side and a screw in a hole on this side, it's super snug and straight. Hardly any wiggle at all. So both the piezo and the Seymour Duncan both go to the input of the potentiometer and then the output, of course, goes to the jack. Everything's grounded. So to make sure everything's gonna work, I get this little $5 Marshall stack. And this one actually does go to 11. Short little cable to the jack, the volume's down. And, okay, so what I'll do first is I'll turn up the volume. So here, you should hear some, some static. But listen. So that tells you the piezo's working. What about the Seymour? What I do is I take the soldering iron like a theremin and then this is not quite it gets when you shut the thing off you shut this thing off it just gets quiet and of course if I crank it it should feedback finally we are in the home stretch I just need to Create a saddle and then string it up, set it up, tune it up, and tear it up. So, yes, even this saddle blank was salvaged from the pallet. So, it's the same pallet that this guy came from, the saddle came from. Typically, for these saddles, I just put a fret slice right th through the middle of it on the top, try to get it in the center. Then using the belt sander, I just kind of curve off the, the edges. And I try to go for some symmetry, typically. Uh, not quite there, I'll, I'll get it a little bit better right there just to kind of, so that this side here matches this side. 
Uh, but next, I want to try a little trick that I saw on YouTube. What I what I saw was these guys, they, they got these round saws and they put double-sided sticky tape on the outside and then uh, stuck some sandpaper to the outside and then just use the drill. So what I want to do is I want to get kind of a, a curved uh, bevel to either side of this so it kind of curves out like that. Double-sided sticky tape, sandpaper, Scissors, ta-da. So now let's see if this thing works. Okay, so here we are at the drill press and we are going to take this profile here and give it a concave thing using this guy. That is almost like a perfect little cell. What do you think there, cat? Hmm? What do you think there? Yeah. So you just get a normal fret, cut it off like normal, and then I'm gonna file the ends and uh, sand them smooth like normal. But here is the funny part. See how this is just still the oak? I haven't stained it or or uh, painted it or anything. <clears throat> and I was thinking, what a contrast to have something on the guitar that's not been stained or oiled or painted or anything like that. So this part here will be the only part on this palette guitar that would be the original color of the palette. So we're going to dress this fret like all the other frets. Just get a file and then on one side put the file on the side of the fret and then with one push motion you're going to go up and over the top. I'll do it again. Up and over the top. Helps if you have this on the ground you can use both hands. Up and over the top. Do the same for both sides. Up and over the top. Up and over the top. Up and over the top. And then you can get your binoculars. And just get a good close look at it. And it's like, yep. I can I can just tell by looking at it. So now I'm going to go back and sand it smooth and I'm going to sand off those little burn marks that were put on by the grinder. So I don't know if you can see this or not, but it's shiny. And the reason why it's shiny is because I started off with 80 grit and then I graduated up to 120 grit and then I graduated up to 220 grit and then 400 grit. And then 800 grit. Right now I'm at 1,000 grit. And then the next one I have is 2,000. So I am just graduating one at a time, one at a time. It's already so shiny, man. It's like you can see the re a reflection off of this thing. It's like, and it's so smooth. It's like glass. It's like one of those polished rocks that you get in, in those um trucker stop stores you know what i'm talking about yeah it looks like it looks like a, a crown jewel so after 2000 grit sandpaper look at that sh shine seriously my gosh so i used the old nail 
through the ball end over here on the underside of the hinge, a little finishing nail. And then I use a little capo just to hold the strings in, in place. And now I gotta find my my tuner invention and then put the saddle in. And then we're off to the races. Well, we got the strings on and we are tuned up to E, B, E. And I did end up sanding the bottom of the saddle a couple of times just to get the action lower and lower and lower. And uh, I could probably still go down just a little bit more, but that's medium to medium high action. <laughs> stretch and then we're gonna uh, have fun with this guy I got some of that fiberglass stuff that they use to bundle our boxes and listen you can even play a note on this one by pulling it tight but anyhow so this pickup here the output of this thing is so hot man I had to turn the gain absolutely off down to zero and it still overdrives the input of this amplifier which is good because that's what that way you can just you can play soft man and it just comes through my gosh um i wanted to take a real just a quick moment here and just kind of teach you this cool little double pick it's like that that it's like down up and uh what i do is i do what they call a palm mute here where i just put the the little muscle right here underneath the pinky. I just kind of rest it on the string, just a little bit on top of the saddle, maybe about three eighths of an inch up. And I just kind of roll on, roll off. Kind of gives me like a little, like a muting sound. Kind of like that rubber band sound like that, like that boing, 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 boing sound, right? So that's that's kind of what you want. If, it, if you don't get it exactly right, don't worry about it. But um, if you get that little sound. Okay, so this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna just do a down up, and it's really matter of fact, and it's really it's just like this. Da, da. And then and then because you're muting it, it's gonna kind of choke it down. So it's not like it's not like this. Ringing, it's it's choked. And then here's the here's the easy part: one finger per each fret, beginning at the fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh. And then we're just gonna go back down. Seven, six, five, four, open. That's the way it sounds. But you want to want to practice like that just to get your fingers to know where they go, and then you want to play it like.
Blue, blue, blue. 